I am not a medical professional. The information provided in this video is for informational purposes. Please consult with your healthcare provider for medical advice. In this video, I'll be going over Dr. Sabi's methodology for healing hypertension, also known as high blood pressure. Yes, next question. Yeah, I'm currently uh, on three medications for hypertension. What do you recommend? Again, the cleansing of the mucus that causes the problem of hypertension, a neuro problem. There's something in your intestines that needs to come out. I was suffering with hypertension. I had hyperpressure and hypertension. That's why I was sex less. Because when you're hypertensive, the whole mechanism goes out of whack. But when you come because you have high blood pressure, now I have to get inside of you and put you on a diet, look over you, and give you something to gradually break up the triglycerides and break up calcification and carbonation. Calcification and carbonation both inside the body, then I have to be with you. I have to hear your aches and pains, like my mother. So I have to be with you now from a <coughs> therapeutical approach, not just from a product you're going to buy off the shelf. No, those are supporters. She needs more than a support. She needs something to go into her and remove obstruction. There are some necessary basics that you must follow to ensure that you heal properly. That includes eating foods that are alkaline and plant-based from Dr. Sabi's Nutrition Guide, as well as drinking a gallon of natural spring water per day. When dealing with hypertension, you also want to watch your sodium intake, meaning that you should not be eating table salt, which is not recommended by Dr. Sabi. You're recommended to consume sea salt in moderation and to keep any kinds of grains to a minimum. And this does include grains that are listed on Dr. Sabi's nutrition guide. Hypertension is a symptom of an underlying issue, whether it be clogged arteries, stress, or what have you, you will need to address the issue that is causing the problem. Some people have hypertension that is due to thyroid issues or kidney issues. You will need to address the issue with those particular problems in order for you to get your blood pressure under control. As Dr. Sabi stated, it is necessary that you change your diet if you want to get your hypertension under control. Healing does start in the gut. You need to cleanse the colon and reintroduce foods that are alkaline in order for the body to heal. I have personally had issues with controlling blood pressure and through fasting, detoxing my system, I was able to get results in only three days as Dr. Sabi indicated in one of his other videos for a client that he was dealing with. These are the results that I received after detoxing for three days. I ended up detoxing for a total of two weeks, but I did see results in only three days. As long as you maintain a healthy alkaline diet, your blood pressure will remain under control. However, if you choose to go back to eating the foods that caused you to have hypertension in the first place, you will relapse and your blood pressure will start to elevate again. So diet is very important and it is key to maintaining a healthy blood pressure, which directly relates to having a healthy heart and kidneys as well as brain function, because as many of you know, hypertension could potentially lead to a stroke as well. There are certain steps in the healing process that cannot be avoided if you want results. These things will always remain the same regarding of any disease that you want to heal from. You will need to cleanse. This includes consuming Irish moss, spring water, cleansing herbs, alkaline fruit smoothies as well as alkaline juice including green juice or green smoothies you will need to revitalize 
which is basically after you've completed your cleanse, your detox or fast or what have you, you want to make sure that you consume herbs that help to nourish and replenish the body while strengthening the immune system. This is also when you would take the herbs that target your specific condition. And you want to make sure that you follow up by eating foods from Dr. Sabi's nutrition guide. There is a link in the description box below to download a copy. There are two parts of healing. One, you must cleanse the body. The body must be cleansed on an intracellular level through detoxification in order to purify each cell in the body and remove mucus. Two, you need to revitalize the body. The body will then rebuild and rejuvenation will take place. You want to consume lots of sea moss and iron during the revitalization. According to Dr. Sabi, in order to rid the body of disease, we must cleanse the skin, the liver, the gallbladder, the lymph glands, the kidneys, and the colon. So what is a cleanse or a detox? Detoxification is considered a type of alternative medicine treatment which aims to rid the body of toxins which are substances that have accumulated in the body and have undesirable short-term or long-term effects on the individual's health. There are several different ways that you can detox. The most common is through fasting and there are various fasting methods which include water fasting, liquid fasting which is where you would consume juices and things like that that you put through a juicing machine there's also smoothie fast fruit fast and a raw food fast the fast that is recommended by dr sabi is to fast for at least 12 days on sea moss herbs water and fruit smoothies you can also consume alkaline juice and this basically means consuming these fruit and juice using ingredients that are on Dr. Sabi's nutrition guide. So how do you do a detox or a cleanse? Depending on the fasting method that you choose, you want to focus on only consuming the drinks and our foods that are specific to the fast that you choose for a certain amount of time. It's highly recommended that you also take cleansing herbs which help to accelerate the healing process. So for example, if you are doing a water fast for three days, you will only drink water while taking the cleansing herbs either in tea or capsule form. Nothing else should be consumed during those three days. While you are detoxing or cleansing, there are some symptoms that you may experience, including having a hard time sleeping, feeling cold, cold and flu symptoms, tongue discoloration, you may have itching, rash or outbreaks, aches and pains, changes in your bowel movement, low energy, you may expel mucus, which is quite common and a good thing, and some people experience low blood pressure. These are temporary and usually subside after the first week. So now I will go over the cleansing herbs that you should take while you are detoxing your body. Cascara Sagrada. It causes muscle contractions in the intestines that help to move stool through the bowels while stimulating the liver and pancreas secretion rhubarb root it's high it's a highly effective laxative that helps improve the tone and health of the digestive tract it also cleanses heavy metals and kills harmful bacteria prodigiosa stimulates pancreas secretion reduces blood sugar levels and motivates fat digestion in the gallbladder while improving stomach digestion Burdock root cleanses the liver and the lymphatic system. It also helps to eliminate toxins through the skin and aids in the filtering of impurities through the bloodstream. Chaparral cleanses the lymphatic system and the gallbladder. It also clears heavy metal from the blood and helps to treat diabetes. Dandelion cleanses the kidneys gallbladder and blood and it also dissolves kidney stones it provides relief from liver disorders diabetes 
urinary disorders, and it is rich in calcium. Elderberry removes the mucus from the upper respiratory system and lungs. It increases urine flow and induces sweating. Guaco cleanses the blood and cleanses the skin by promoting perspiration. It reduces inflammation, increases urination, and promotes healthy respiratory system. It is also high in iron and it strengthens the immune system and is high in potassium phosphate. Eucalyptus is great for cleansing the skin. It can be used for steaming and in a sauna or you can just cleanse the skin through going into a sauna to promote sweating or going out into the sun and allowing yourself to sweat that way naturally. Mullion cleanses the lungs. It removes mucus from the small intestines and activates lymph circulation in the chest and neck. A common question that I get asked is how long do you detox or cleanse? The duration of a detox depends on the individual's tolerance and level of toxicity. Typically, it's recommended that you detox for 7 to 14 days. However, 1 to 3 months is best. Dr. Sabi fasted for 90 days when he was healed from diabetes. This is an extremely long time for most people. So Dr. Sabi recommends a minimum of 12 days. If you have health issues that make it difficult to fast on water or juice, I recommend fasting on fruit and or raw veggies from Dr. Sabi's nutrition guide. You will still get results, but it may take a little longer. Just be patient. The healing process will still happen. Another question that I get is how much of the cleansing herbs do I take? If you are taking herbs from a pre-purchased cleansing package, please follow the recommended dosage. If you are using your own individual cleansing herbs and they do not come with recommended dosages, I recommend that you research the recommended dosage for each herb, especially if you're going to be using them in capsule form. Typically, it's easier to make herbal teas with the ratio of one teaspoon to eight ounces of water for each herb. You can also make a larger picture of the herbs using this same ratio. Uh -huh. Beautiful people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Taiwa, mm -hmm. tell them what is good for your pressure. I'm going to go over herbs that help to lower cholesterol, unclog the arteries, help the arteries to relax, that relieve stress, and that help to lower blood pressure. Again, if you are dealing with issues that are causing your hypertension, such as thyroid issues, kidney issues, adrenal issues, things of that nature, you will also need to take herbs that address those issues directly in addition to these herbs. Flor de Manita. It supports cardiovascular health regulates blood pressure, and helps maintain healthy cholesterol levels. Lily of the Valley, it is rich in iron fluorine and potassium phosphate. It's also used as a diuretic for kidney stones, as a cardiac tonic, and to address the central nervous system. Hierbo del Sapo, best for lowering cholesterol and triglycerides. It also helps clear the arteries, helps with type 2 diabetes, kidney stones, and other kidney problems. This is a great herb to incorporate if you are dealing with hypertension that is due to kidney issues, in addition to dandelion and burdock root. Shepherd's Purse. It helps with bladder infections, bleeding disorders, it lowers blood pressure, helps with mild heart failure, kidney disease, and much more. Flor de Tila. It is also used for rapid heartbeat, high blood pressure, excessive bleeding, nervous tension, trouble sleeping, problems with bladder control, and muscle spasms. 
sarsaparilla root. It is the best source of iron and it is necessary for healing. Jamaican sarsaparilla is highly recommended. It is also a diuretic and has restorative properties that may help with congestive heart failure, high blood pressure, PMS, urinary problems, impotence, hives, infertility, the nervous system, inflammation, and discomfort from rheumatism and arthritis. It is also a very important herb to incorporate so that you can provide your body with the iron that is needed to help assist with lowering blood pressure. By introducing more iron into your body, you will be able to introduce more oxygen to the cells. Valerian root. It is used for conditions connected to anxiety and psychological stress, including nervous, asthma, hysterical states, excitability, fear of illness, headaches, migraines, and upset stomach. And it also helps to lower blood pressure. This is a good herb to take if you are having hypertension that may be related to stress as well as anxiety. Yarrow. It has been used to induce sweating and to stop wound bleeding. It also has been reported to reduce heavy menstrual bleeding and pain. It has been used to relieve GI ailments that is in the digestive tract for cerebral, cerebral and coronary thrombosis to lower high blood pressure to improve circulation and the, to tone varicose veins. Lupulo, it breaks up calcification, relieves pain and helps to calm the nerves. This is another one that is great for stress. It also improves sleep, helps with hot, hot flashes, as well as high cholesterol and it also lowers the blood pressure. So when do you take the revitalizing herbs? They should be taken after your cleanse. Dr. Sabi recommends that you cleanse for at least 12 days. A typical cleanse that I usually would recommend that most people do is about 14 to 30 days. But whether you detox for one week or one month, or even just a few days, you will benefit from a cleanse. The amount of time that you cleanse does greatly help in the healing process, but it is not the only factor. As I mentioned before, the longer you fast, the better. However, you don't want to overdo it. Whenever you choose to end your cleanse, you should start consuming the revitalizing herbs immediately after and go straight into eating foods on Dr. Sabi's nutrition guide. So a few things to remember. Only eat foods that are on Dr. Sabi's nutrition guide after completing your cleanse or detox. Drink one gallon of spring water every day. The revitalizing herbs and Irish sea moss are a necessary part of healing in order to restore the body after cleansing. I also highly recommend the Jamaican sarsaparilla. You can take the Mexican sarsaparilla as well, but the Jamaican sarsaparilla is highly recommended. It's a great benefit to cleanse at least once per year for seven days if you are consuming an alkaline diet. However, if you are not eating alkaline foods from Dr. Sabi's Nutrition Guide, you should cleanse more often, at least every three months. Keep in mind that consuming foods that are acidic will put the body at risk for disease, and if you have healed from a disease, it will put your body at risk for relapsing depending on the disease. You can find many of the herbs mentioned in this video on my website. It will be linked in the description box below. It is www.alkalinemealideas.com. I do also offer a total cleanse to help to detox the body as well as revitalizing herbs. 
including capsules and tea form. You can also get the hypertension capsules that I offer as well, the hypertension balancer. And I will also leave a link in the description box to my Facebook group where you can get great support information and some great recipes to help you along. You can also download a copy of Dr. Sabi's Nutrition Guide on my website as well. Again, that's www.alkalinemealideas.com. As Dr. Sabi stated, disease can only exist in an environment that is acid. Only consistent use of natural botanical remedies will effectively cleanse and detoxify a diseased body, reversing it to its intended alkaline state. I pray that this information was helpful to you. I will also have a link. Uh, uh, I will also have my email listed in the description box as well for those of you who would like to contact me. Thank you for watching. Please like, share, subscribe, and leave any comments or questions below.